Hi, it's Dwyer. It's January the 4th, 2020. Excuse me, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's offer some thoughts on King Ryan Garcia's knockout victory over Luke Campbell. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I dive into boxing, let me just tip my hat, my fandom, to my team, the New York Giants. Fellas, you made me proud. We didn't make the playoffs. What else is new? But the Giants gave Giant fans hope until that last game of the year. Right? The Washington football team, the division winners, the eventual winners, beating the Philadelphia Eagles. Very proud to be a Giant fan. I hope it shows with this jersey. Let's talk boxing, but first, and let me just say, Ryan Garcia delivered for us. He got the KO. The recommended play was Garcia by KO hedged with Luke Campbell simply to win, right? We weren't worried in the second round when Luke Campbell dropped Ryan Garcia because had Luke won the fight, we would have still been in the penthouse, right? We took the risk that the fight wasn't going to go the distance and the young lion closed the show. Now, I know I'm going to sound ungrateful here, right? I appreciate Ryan Garcia's work. I know I'm going to sound like I'm crashing the party here, but there's some things that need to be said. I believe commentators, especially the ones who did this fight, I love the zone, but I thought it was more of a fan club situation than actual commentating on the fight, right? I know Ryan Garcia is popular on Twitter. I know he's a guy who's pulling in fans. I get that he's unbeaten with a big punch. Okay, fair enough. There's still a story here that hardcore gamblers or that simply the boxing cognoscente needs to look at closely. Let's get into it by starting with a baseball analogy. Let's say you have a great high-velocity fastball. You're a pitcher. You're a fastball pitcher. You cruise through the minors. Folks just can't catch up with your fastball. It's just too damn fast. Right? But then you get to the majors. And you need a strike against a fastball hitter. Let's say you're on the mound and you're facing. I'll just randomly name some. Barry Bonds. A-Rod. Mike Trout. Jose Altuve, Mookie Betts, right? Let's say it's no longer about the velocity on your fastball. Let's say now, in addition to velocity, your location matters. Worse yet, your ability in this situation to throw other pitches to locate other pitches matters. Now, Ryan Garcia is a puncher. He's a knockout artist. He's unbeaten. He's had over 200 amateur fights. He's now calling out some big names. Gervonta Davis, Southpaw himself, Slugger, can fight low has beaten much better, let me emphasize that, much better than Ryan Garcia has fought, right? Understand, I think the world of Jose Pedraza. Gervonta Davis won that fight by stoppage. In the weight range, guys with belts, Teofimo Lopez. Folks, this guy is a technician. He's mastered tech 
technique. Understand he has a lot of pitches. Understand he's a sharp counterpuncher. Then, of course, you have another champion, Devin Haney. He's a mover. Has among the best legs in the sport. Very fast. Very hard to find in the ring. Guys are so overwhelmed by the movement, they go over voluntarily to the ropes against Devin Haney because they feel too exposed in the middle of the ring. They can't find him. He can find them. So Ryan Garcia is out of the minors now. Now he's trying to fight world-class fighters. Now he's calling out world-class fighters. He thinks so much of himself that with one of the best in the sport pound for pound in the ring with him, Right, Saul Alvarez attended the fight. Understand, Eddie Reynoso is Saul Alvarez's trainer. He's the trainer for Ryan Garcia. With Saul Alvarez in the ring, Ryan Garcia, after this fight, <laughs> thought it was prudent to put on a crown to run around the ring. Right now, it's okay. He can celebrate any way he wants. But I have some questions here. They need to be asked. Right? If you're thinking about who this guy is, if you're asking yourself the question of, is he ready to face boxing's equivalent of bonds, etc.? Right? Then these are the kind of questions that need to be asked first. His amateur background cuts two ways, folks. Cuts two ways. When you have more than 200 amateur fights, in my opinion, at the end of that, a defensive guy who wants to start his career fast and early will have a defensive construct. Will have thought about what's coming back at him. I don't care what tools the guy has, right? Understand, might shock some people. But Floyd Mayweather has an A plus left hook, right? It's a Joe Fraser level left hook. But yet, that's not his game, right? You understand. Floyd Mayweather is a defensive wizard. You understand. It took work for Floyd Mayweather to develop his defensive skills, right? Logan Paul, by the way, is going to find out the hard way what those skills are. But understand, Mayweather, look up his KO percentage. Mayweather dropped guys on that left hook. That's a concussive punch. But that's not what Mayweather's about. Boxing's a craft. You learn the craft. Teofimo Lopez, heavy puncher. I'm just naming technicians here. Right? Teofimo's a heavy puncher. Right? He's sudden with it. But yet, whatever offensive skills Teofimo Lopez has, Teofimo Lopez always has a hand guarding his body. Has anyone noticed that? He's anticipating what's coming back. However good his offense is, he is ready defensively for you. Right? He wants to trade with you. Counterpunchers are close enough where, you know, they can counter you. To get close, after 200 amateur fights, I'm expecting a guy to have a defensive construct, to hide his chin, to not get caught flush, to hide his body, to have body parts, an arm, whatever, between him and you. 
or to bend at the waist. So you have to reach for his body. So as you do so, you're getting hit with shots. I'm also expecting guys to anticipate what's coming back. Right? Understand, the sport's such a craft that it's very hard to find a more explosive fighter with heavy-handed power in both hands than Mike Tyson. But yet, when we think of Mike Tyson, what do we think of? We think of Mike Tyson having his hands up like this. We think of Mike Tyson moving his upper body. Understand, Tyson understood he didn't want to get hit by you. He needed to come in with some moves to avoid getting hit. Some recognition that you might be throwing shots back. So these guys develop head movement. Now let me just say, what I want you to do here, and the Zone is an excellent platform. I've been a long time the Zone subscriber. Right? This isn't the first fight I've seen on the Zone. Like many of you, I watch fights on the Zone. Right? The Zone keeps the fight up. You can go back and watch the fight. You don't have to have watched it live. What I want you to do is to go back and watch the fight. And I want you to kill the volume. Now, old timers know that in one of boxing's biggest fights from the 1980s, right? It's a moment in boxing. Ray Leonard's comeback after years out the ring. I'm not kidding. Against marvelous Marvin Hagler who defined the middleweight division, right? They claim Ray Leonard wins the decision, right? But they claim that if you look at the body punches, Marvin Hagler wins the fight, right? As it was in the moment, I'm telling you, half the crowd thought Hagler won, half the crowd thought Ray Leonard won. Well, what I want you to do in this fight is to look at Luke Campbell's shots to Ryan Garcia's body. Understand, Garcia and Campbell are tall for the weight class. Right, they're tall for the weight class. If I'm gonna be calling out Gervonta Davis, I've gotta have some way to protect my body, folks. That's a heavy-handed dude. Right? I can't go in there expecting a shootout with a gunslinger, can I? I've got to protect my body. Folks, I'll put it to you this way. And keep in mind, I was hedged up on this. Right? If Campbell won, great, I get three to one odds. I'm not, I'm not crying. If Garcia won by KO, great, I'm hedged. So I'm watching the fight. I'm, I'm into the fight as a fight. I wasn't beholden to one side or the other. Campbell is landing body shots. Campbell's a southpaw. Ryan Garcia's orthodox. Campbell somehow is landing body shots with both hands. It's staggering. I mean, I was watching the fight. They don't announce it. Sergio Mora on the telecast, and he's excellent. He mentions, mentions that Luke Campbell's having some success going to Garcia's body. No, folks, it, it's not some success. He's feasting on Garcia's body. Feasting on it, right? Garcia's too upright to begin with. You think, okay, maybe he's creating an optical illusion here. Maybe he looks like his body's open. But if you fall into the trap, oh, you're getting hit with shots. No, no, folks. As I watched the fight, I did not know what Ryan Garcia was trying to accomplish defensively with regard to his body. Understand, Luke is hitting him with right hands, but Luke's right hand is up front, right? Because he's in a southpaw stance. So he's hitting him with right hands to the body. Then he's able to lean across at different times 
and hit Garcia with left hands, his dominant hand, to Garcia's body. Folks, after 200 plus amateur fights, Garcia should have been better prepared for that. Right? In other generations, you had tall fighters. Thomas to hit Ben Hearns. Good luck getting to his body. Understand, Hitman, they keep trying to tell you that Ryan Garcia has a great jab. Let me ask a boilerplate question. Where was it in this fight? Hitman had a great jab. If you were going to try to get to Hitman's body, you had to get through all kind of stuff. Right? His jab, Hitman could move. Right here, right? Ryan Garcia is not moving. He's getting hit with body shots. Now, as I said earlier, this doesn't happen to Teofimo Lopez. Lopez is not going to allow you to feast on his body. You'll notice Lopez has a shoulder. Lopez, to me, quite frankly, has modeled himself after Floyd Mayweather. Lopez has a hand here. Right? Don't get me wrong. Lopez's offense is two-handed, but you've got to be a hell of a counterpuncher to get to Lopez's body. Here, Luke Campbell is getting to Ryan Garcia's body. And he's doing it early when Garcia is fully rested. I didn't like it. Let's go one step further. I didn't see the difference between Ryan Garcia and Callum Smith. You know who would destroy Ryan Garcia just style-wise? Canelo. The same way Canelo looked at Callum Smith's body and said, okay, I'm going to hit this guy. <laughs> I'm going to hit this guy in the body several times. And as you were watching that fight, you were saying to yourself, man, can't Callum Smith use his height, use his reach, move away from Canelo, right? The last thing you want is a body puncher in the pocket teeing off on your body. Well, here, folks, Ryan Garcia couldn't use his height, his reach, couldn't get away from Luke Campbell's body shots. Right, folks? To me, that does not bode well for him in a fight against Gervonta Davis or Teofimo Lopez. Right? Understand, Lopez is a machine. He had Lomachenko backing up. He's on his front foot. That's how he won that fight. Right? While I question whether Teofimo could hang on his back foot. Right? I have some concerns about Teofimo Lopez. I can't imagine him having problems against a guy who is this open to the body. In other words, if a shootout happens between Teofimo Lopez and Ryan Garcia, let's just say Teofimo's going to be defending himself. He's going to have more defense than Ryan Garcia. I know that because I saw this fight, right? Let me say this too. Garcia is dropped in the second round, right? Off a left hand from a southpaw. Now, forgive me. I was hearing the hype on the zone. Right? I listened to the telecast. I was hearing that Ryan Garcia loves fighting southpaws. He feels they're tailor-made for him. I was hearing about the Ryan Garcia jab, which I didn't see enough of, right? It wasn't like I was watching this fight and I saw some stiff jab and I thought, man, this guy is a good jab. Folks, that never happened. Right? I see Luke Campbell close enough to Ryan Garcia to be riddling his body. 
right? Landing with both hands to the body. Then the coup de grace. A guy who supposedly feels comfortable against left-handers, even though he doesn't have that much experience, then gets dropped off a straight left hand. In other words, Campbell, <laughs> Campbell isn't even being secretive about it. How does he drop Ryan Garcia? He throws his dominant hand right down Main Street. Right, this is like the crook coming to your house, the alleged burglar, and knocking on your front door. Well, understand too, Luke Campbell doesn't have to squeeze the punch in. It's not like Garcia's like this and the punch gets in here, right? This isn't threading the needle. No, Ryan Garcia's standing like this, then gets hit upside the head, goes down hard. When he hit the canvas, I was wondering if he was going to get up. That's how bad he looked hitting the canvas. Straight left, right down Main Street. Now, all I can say is, folks, this is different than Canelo. Now, I'm mentioning Canelo. I'm mentioning elite fighters. Right? This is different than Terrence Crawford. Those guys know how to move their head, don't they? You don't watch Terrence Crawford fights where he's getting smacked in the head several times. Right? Canelo against Danny Jacobs at one point. Danny Jacobs jumps in. Tries to hit Canelo in the head. Canelo just moves his head as dodging punches. Let's just say Ryan Garcia thinks he's a knockout puncher. He thinks the rest of his life is going to be like his life up to now, knocking out guys, right? He doesn't seem to realize that he needs to slip these punches. Understand, it's not just the punch in the second round. He's caught flush several times in this fight in his head. There's several times in this fight where Luke Campbell lands clean headshots. You notice Ryan Garcia isn't moving a lot. He's there trying to trade with you. But as he gets offensive, his defense drops. Right? He's not rolling away from the punch. He doesn't seem to anticipate the punch that well. Now, I get that this was him bursting onto the prime time. I get that he's the headliner on this card, right? Canelo's there in street clothes watching his, you know, buddy, right? Trust me, had Canelo laced up the gloves, <laughs> he would have been the headliner in his fight. We get that this is Ryan Garcia's coming out party, that with the social space and sync, with the social spacing, this was a sellout. We get that the young guy is excited. Okay, understood. But let me say this. You get dropped like Garcia gets dropped. He gets off the canvas. Third round starts. He's immediately trying to go after Luke Campbell. Folks, that's, that's not the way to do it. Right? I believe cagier fighters would say, wow, I got hit with a straight left hand. You know, let me clear my head. That's the first thing. Let me clear my head. And let me try to move away from that left hand. Let me make sure that I get the timing of my opponent's left hand so I don't get dropped again. Right? If you get dropped by... Mike Tyson or someone like that, that next round when you've just gotten off the canvas, I'm not sure if it's a sound game plan to decide you're going to bum rush Mike Tyson. You're going to try to prove to him that that knockdown, which everyone knows was a hardcore knockdown, was a flash knockdown. Right? I'm expecting if you're fighting Gervonta Davis, 
and you get dropped like Ryan Garcia got dropped. Then the bell sounds and you come out the next round. I'm not expecting you to try to bum rush Gervonta Davis. I'm expecting more defense. I'm expecting a reassessment of the angles. Whatever went wrong where you were wide open. Wide open for a straight left from a southpaw. I'm expecting you to take the time to fix that problem. Ryan Garcia is so accustomed to being alpha. Right? He's been favored, I believe, in all the fights he's had. He's so accustomed to being alpha that I just don't think the flow of the fight is approached here from a veteran perspective. Right? So, let's say this. He wasn't moving his head a lot before he got knocked down. He wasn't moving his head a lot after he got knocked down. Now, I want to just have folks consider Devin Haney. Folks, you can find Ryan Garcia in the ring. You can find his head in the ring. We saw that in this fight. Right? It wasn't like you were watching this fight and you thought, oh, he's hard to hit in the head. Well, you know Devin Haney's hard to hit in the head. You know Devin Haney moves a lot better than Luke Campbell. Right? Let's just say in terms of movement. Right? Keeping out of harm's way. Not allowing your opponent to have angles they like. Devin Haney's far ahead of Ryan Garcia. I know I'm sounding hard here. Garcia's a talent. Don't get me wrong. But we're not scouting the minor leagues here. We're not even scouting most of boxing. We're talking about him against Bonds, A-Rod, Mike Trout, Jose Altuve, Mookie Betts. Right? He's calling out the big names in a sport with belts. He's running around the ring wearing a crown. He wants you to know he's the king. I assume most boxing fans realize that if you're going to be the king at 135 pounds, you're going to have to fight Teofimo Lopez, uh, Vasily Lomachenko, right? Think about Lomachenko for a moment. A master at movement, a master at timing. A guy who against a Nicholas Walters, for example, heavy puncher reaches the point, breaks his man to the point where he's standing in the pocket. Right? He's just walking in on the guy. And, of course, Walters realized, wow, I need to quit in this fight. You think a guy with movement like that is going to be vulnerable to Ryan Garcia? I don't. Let me say this, too. There were times where Garcia, who is a blessed puncher, Gets Luke Campbell up against the ropes. Right? Happens a few times in this fight. You'll notice that Ryan Garcia is ready to open up. And you'll notice Luke Campbell starts moving laterally. After all, Luke Campbell in his 30s is a vet. He's been in with Linares. He's been in with Lomachenko. Luke Campbell starts moving along the side of the ropes. And that completely slows down Ryan Garcia. Right, Ryan Garcia is accustomed to guys up against the ropes and he goes over there and the guy's hurt and the guy's vulnerable. When the guy starts moving a bit, it forces Ryan Garcia to reset. What does he think is going to happen if he goes after Devin Haney when Devin Haney is up against the ropes? Does he think Devin Haney is going to stand there to get hit with shots? Let me say this, too. You know, it's just a beef of mine. But I believe boxing is so competitive. It's so competitive that you've really got to use the skills you have, the advantages you have. Now in this fight, 
where Luke Campbell is right in front of him. Luke's not running, folks. He's right in front of him. Where Ryan Garcia gets dropped. I know that, you know, Ryan Garcia knocked out of Luke Campbell has caused amnesia on the rest of the fight. I understand Campbell was badly hurt at the end of the fifth round, too. Right? Okay. Both are true. But understand, Campbell hadn't been down until the last punch of the fight. Not only that, Garcia, and there are questions about Garcia's stamina. Go back to my pre-fight video where I highlight one such fight. There was a question here, given the number of shots to his body that he took, whether Ryan Garcia was going to be Ryan Garcia over the last third of the fight. You get hit with a lot of body shots early. You're going to have problems later. Right? You wondered what would happen if Garcia's stamina dipped and Luke, the vet, who has gone several rounds against elite fighters, might have had the stamina advantage late. Right? That's all forgotten because Luke got stopped off a body shot. Right? But understand, Ryan Garcia is not using his height here. He's not moving away, he's not making sure that he pumps the jab, that Sergio Mora is talking about him having on the telecast. Now understand, this is common in boxing. Fighters showing all kind of skills against lesser competition. Then they ran against elite fighters, and guess what? That nice jab that you had on the way up, maybe you're not able to throw it against Anthony Joshua. <laughs> maybe you're not able to throw it against Tyson Fury. Maybe that jab goes out the window against Mike Tyson. It's so commonplace that Mike Tyson has a saying. He says, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right? Let's just say here, against Luke Campbell, not Teofimo Lopez, not Gervonta Davis, both of whom hit harder than Luke Campbell. I think even Luke Campbell would say that. Here against Luke Campbell, Garcia's supposedly great jab was missing. Do you think it's suddenly going to reappear when he faces Gervonta Davis? You know, ask yourself the question, too. A guy could have a great jab, but that jab might be a stationary jab, not a mobile jab. Right? Think Sonny Liston. Right? Against Ali. Ali starts moving around the ring. Liston couldn't find him with the jab. Are you sure Ryan Garcia would be able to land jabs on Devin Haney, who moves? I'm not. So... Hey, I'm grateful he got the KO, right? Help me out, but I'll be taking Gervonta Davis against Ryan Garcia. I'll be taking Teofimo Lopez against Ryan Garcia. I'll be taking Devin Haney against Ryan Garcia. He's a blessed puncher. No doubt about it. Right? No doubt about it. Bless Puncher. Um, I believe his sense of balance throws opponents off. But I saw some things in this fight I didn't like. Right? I thought his body was open to get hit. I thought his head was open to get hit. I thought Luke Campbell, at one point, Luke Campbell was able to throw a nice short hook, nice short right hook that hits him, right? I think Ryan Garcia is open for short counters. I have questions about Ryan Garcia's stamina, and Ryan Garcia isn't even moving around the ring that much. He does have a back foot game. I have seen it looking at other fights, right? But let's just say 
I believe guys committed to the craft, craftsmen in boxing, understand that they might have to go 12 rounds. Right? Lomachenko starts to make a comeback against Teofimo Lopez late in their fight. But you know what? Lopez was ready to go 12 rounds. And that was against a mover who Lopez is trying to walk down through the fight. Here, Ryan Garcia is not even moving that much. He's getting hit with body shots. If I have questions about his stamina now, how's Ryan Garcia going to add a lot of movement later and be able to go 12 rounds against a Gervonta Davis, a Teofimo Lopez? Right? I, you know, let's just say Golden Boy has a dilemma on their hands. I know there was mention on the DAZN telecast about Ryan Garcia being the future of boxing. Now, I privately believe Golden Boy might have the future of boxing, but that's a different fighter, Virgil Ortiz. Right? If you want to see a guy rough up Ryan Garcia, Look at the film. It's an amateur film of Ortiz against Garcia. Now, the judges somehow gave Garcia the win, right? I would have scored that fight for Ortiz, right? But you notice Ortiz is able to get inside on Ryan Garcia repeatedly. If that happens with Gervonta Davis, folks, you're not beating Gervonta Davis, so let's just say, I can just imagine the job Eddie Reynoso has on his hands in practice. I get the feeling Eddie doesn't have to say much to Canelo, right? Eddie Reynoso, the trainer, is one of boxing's best trainers. He likes defense. He believes in strategy, right? You know, you can tell Canelo comes into fights knowing what he wants to do strategically. He has a game plan. It's not ad hoc. Now, I get the feeling when you have a fighter like Canelo, you could just say, hey, <laughs> Canelo, do your thing, right? You know Canelo's thing involves hiding his body, moving his head, right? Even though he's heavy-handed, not just jumping in the pocket. You understand Canelo's not going to be standing outside and then get hit with a straight left by a lefty and then drop. With Ryan Garcia, I get the feeling Eddie Reynoso has a lot of work that he has to do. <laughs> he has to tell Ryan Garcia things like, hey, player, move your head. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, you're leaving your body undefended. Protect your body. Right? I don't, I don't think Garcia, I think Garcia is blinded by the bright lights. I don't think he understands that the sports of craft, that you could be a fighter who calls yourself the takeover. Spending your time refining the little things. I'm not sure if Ryan Garcia has thought things through. Right? I saw Teofimo Lopez in a very tough fight against Nakatani. Now understand how deep the water is in the division. Right? You have Nakatani who just beat Felix Verdejo, Felix is a guy who has a bad chin, but if you don't get to that chin, he can compete with anybody in the sport, right, in terms of styles and stuff like that. Blessed fighter, right? Nakatani, heavy-handed. So you have Teofimo Lopez in with Nakatani. Nakatani's throwing unorthodox looping punches that are hard to duplicate in preparing for a fight. Lopez gets hit with some of the shots. Now, keep in mind, when I say Lopez gets hit with shots, I don't mean like Ryan Garcia, where his hands are here and he gets hit upside the head. No, you know, you see, Lopez has a hand up and stuff, and Nakatani's looping punches behind the guard. And Teofimo Lopez was prepared to go 12 rounds that fight. Right? He bit down. That was a tough fight. Teofimo was prepared to fight for very contested rounds. 
right? I'm not sure if Ryan Garcia understands the dedication that his colleagues in the sport are committed to, the attention to detail that his colleagues are committed to in preparing for fights. He looked reckless to me in this one. As it was, he got caught and dropped in the second round. I know the judges agreed with Chris Mannix's scorecard, but I believe two of the judges only gave Luke Campbell that second round. I thought Luke Campbell also won the fourth round. I thought it was an open question. What was going to happen down the stretch? Given the number of body shots that Ryan Garcia took in the fight. In my opinion, if he's serious about facing Bonds, A-Rod, Mike Trout, Jose Altuve, and Mookie Betts, boxing's equivalent of them, he's going to have to clean up his game. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me say this too. He's tall. If he gains weight and ventures to 140, understand the water is deep there too. Right? He has to clean up the holes in his game right now. He has to find a way, has to, to protect his body right now, especially if he's not going to move, if he, if he believes the pocket is his, if he's going to compete against his opposition, elite opposition. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.